On this episode of Death by Bungie, Bungie and I finally get a shot at a nice buck in the Pennsylvania crossbow season. The 37 Days of Awesome starts right now. said from the beginning that Death by Bungie is not a channel about shooting big bucks. I think if you look at the description to every video I've uploaded here on YouTube, that's kind of in the description of every one of them. It says this is not a channel about shooting big bucks. But with all the work I do on food plots, all the work that we do here with habitat management and all the time that I spend in the woods, getting a shot at a nice buck is certainly one of the goals of doing all this stuff. It's nice to see some positive reinforcement. Nice to see some big deer coming through your property after you put in all that hard work. This year, I'm lucky. I've got two nice bucks using this property. The first, if you're on our Facebook page, you've seen pictures of this buck. It's the second year in a row I've had this buck around. Pictures of him that I had during the summertime when he was in velvet visiting some of our mineral sites. Some of those pictures, he had sort of a deformed antler hanging down over one side of his face, but the other antler grew perfectly. Now, here he is walking around in the fall, that one antler looks pretty good. He's a really healthy, large, mature buck. I don't know what went wrong with the antler. The other buck that I had on my cameras was a younger deer, a really nice eight point spread out to his ears, just the kind of buck that I'm looking for in the fall crossbow season. During the summer, I had a lot of different pictures of these bucks making their way through the property, using the food plots, eating the clover. In fact, one of the velvet pictures of that eight point buck ended up being our banner across our Facebook page for a period of time. That's pretty exciting when you're looking at it sometime in early summer and you see bucks in velvet and you see them out in the daytime like that. And it didn't seem to be a problem to get them to visit different parts of the property. I had lots of really good videos and pictures of these deer visiting the mineral site that I had set out. Now you have to take those mineral sites out at least 30 days before the hunting season begins here in Pennsylvania. So by the beginning of September, those sites were removed. As September rolled around, those deer started to go nocturnal like they frequently do. And I wasn't getting as many pictures of them as I used to. In fact, I was only getting nighttime pictures. Now they were still using the food plots. They're still hanging around the property. They're still coming in, eating the clover. It's still getting lots of pictures of these deer, but only at nighttime. All the pictures, all the videos that I got of those deer after that were nighttime pictures. Now I know that both of these deer are still in the area. I have nighttime pictures, in fact, of those two mature bucks fighting, if you can believe that. You would think they'd be enjoying the clover that I worked so hard on in that Buckfield clover food plot, but I have a picture of the one antlered buck making his way up across the buck field. Minutes later, I have a picture of that eight point with his head down, and then sure enough, the two of them locked horns, pushing each other around the food plot. That's exciting to see pictures like that. It's exciting to see big bucks fighting. I'd love to see that during the daytime, but nonetheless, it's good that those deer are still around. The hope that I had was that down the road, at least I could maybe entice those deer into some daytime activity as the rut approached. I have lots and lots of does running around the property and plenty of reason for those deer to get excited and get up on their feet during the daytime during the rut. One of the things that I've talked about here, one of the things we've, we've done over the last few years is put up mock scrapes and licking branches. I've done a couple of videos on that sort of thing and I posted a lot of information about that on our Facebook page. This year in particular, Genevieve and I went down into the hemlocks and we found a good trail where I was getting some pictures, where I was getting some deer activity where they're walking on a regular trail we set up a nice licking branch, used a couple of zip ties just to tie an oak branch to that dead hemlock limb to hold it in place long enough to get a scrape going. And that licking branch that we put in immediately started getting some activity along that trail. 
that's great news, and I knew it was just a matter of time before one of those bucks came by and started using that scrape as well. We're just getting into the rut now in northeastern Pennsylvania, and I managed to get out there for a morning hunt. Bright and early, an hour before daybreak, I make my way down into the woods, through the woods, and all the way to the hemlocks, which is all the way on the far end of the property. So I've made my way out there, I cross the creek, and as I'm approaching that stand, the first thing I notice is that that licking branch is no longer hanging on the tree. It's been knocked off and it's laying on the ground. I check the camera card just to make sure I can have that in the tree stand with me to look at it with a DSLR camera. So I climb into the tree stand and get set up, and I start looking at those pictures on the camera card from the trail camera that was set up about five yards away from that licking branch. And sure enough, the morning before this, that eight point buck had been coming through and he had been working that branch. In fact, he worked that branch so hard that it broke off and fell off the hemlock branch. So it was no longer fixed to the tree, instead it's laying on the ground. He was the guy that knocked it off. So I set up in the tree stand, I'm all ready for my morning hunt. I couldn't be happier on this nice brisk Saturday morning in northeastern Pennsylvania. Sure enough, before too long, I get some activity. I hear somebody coming down that trail. I watch, I look around, and sure enough, it's a buck. It's a little five point buck. He seems to be looking for something in particular, probably looking for a doe. He's making his way around and he smells the area for a while. Uh, a couple of times he looks up and it's almost as though he's looking behind him. He's looking around to see if another deer is coming. He doesn't run off, but eventually he makes his way off. Now, I'm starting to regret this a little bit. On one hand, again, this is not a channel about shooting big bucks, but we are getting into the best part of the season, and for that reason, I decided to pass on this buck. Over the last few years, you've seen me pass on other bucks, younger bucks like that. I'm not saying that that's what you should be doing. I'm not saying that I shouldn't be doing it. I'm just saying that it's what I've decided to do overall with regard to the deer on this place. I've got the trail cameras out. I know that there are a couple of mature bucks in the area. And for that reason, I'm gonna hold on until I get a shot at one of those two mature bucks. And I'm glad I did pass because it wasn't long before I saw some activity off to my right. I got in position with Bungie and sure enough, coming down that trail was that eight-point buck. My heart is beating fast and I couldn't be more excited. He walks down that trail, walks to where that licking branch used to be, and then he finds that the licking branch isn't there, and instead of using that as a scrape, he takes it out on a small hemlock tree right next to where that licking branch used to be. I sit in the tree stand and I'm in position to take a shot, but unfortunately he's facing me and that little hemlock tree is in the way. I can't get a shot. He's working that hemlock tree like there's no tomorrow. If I sit there for almost 10 minutes watching him work that hemlock tree, rubbing his forehead up and down on it, rubbing his antlers on it to the point where I can see that he's starting to get uh, some of the hemlock bark in his antlers from all the abuse that that poor tree has taken. Once that tree is good and rubbed up, he starts to make a scrape. I watch him digging out the dirt and throwing dirt all over the place, and I get that opportunity to actually see him making that scrape. One thing I can tell you about this buck, this buck is the king of the forest. He is the dominant buck. He's marking his territory, and I can see through the scope he's missing some of his tines. That tells me he's been fighting. And because I had seen those pictures before, I know he's not afraid to defend his territory. Nearly 10 minutes of this goes by and finally looks like he's getting done abusing that poor hemlock tree. And I'm thinking as long as this buck either turns left or turns right, I get a broadside shot, I'm gonna take that shot as soon as that opportunity presents itself. The only way that this won't work out for me, the only way that this won't work out for Bungie is if that buck decides to come directly toward me. He does that, I won't have a shot. He looks like he's still trying to decide which way to go. He takes just a few steps to his right. He's quartering to me just a little bit. But Bungie and I, we're gonna take that shot. Now I know that that was a good shot. I saw the way that he reacted. I saw the way he kicked. For whatever reason, the Luminoc didn't go off. 
Uh, every once in a while that happens. I do need to get some of those Luminox replaced. I'm assuming that the battery wasn't perfect. But the shot looked good because as I've told you before, I try to watch those arrows go through the scope. A lot easier when the Luminox works. But nonetheless, it felt like it was a good shot. It looked like it was a good shot. And when that buck kicks, you can see that he's kicking his hind legs up a little bit. Another sign of a pretty good shot. So I felt really good about it. He runs off, he only runs about 50 to 60 yards, and just as he gets sort of out of sight through the trees, I see that he's standing there. He's not crashing. Now I'm starting to get nervous. I look and that buck is still on his feet. I sit tight and watch him. In less than a minute, I watch him lay down. He doesn't crash, he just lays down. Now I'm nervous. Because that buck is quartering to me a little bit, I think I got one lung, I got the lung closest to me, and got his liver. That's what I just sort of deduced from the circumstances, from looking at it. It looked that way to me. Uh, that's still gonna be a fatal shot, but I don't want him getting up and running, so I'm not gonna go after him, I'm not gonna push him. I decided to give myself exactly one hour from the last time that I saw any movement, and then, and only then, Bungie and I will go collect that buck. This is the longest hour you can imagine. I'm sitting there watching this buck and I am this close to getting my hands on a nice buck after three years of doing this show and after 160 different episodes of this show and after hunting and working on food plots since 2009, hunting with a crossbow since 2010, I finally got a shot at a really nice eight point buck, just the buck that we're looking for, just the buck we had followed on our trail camera pictures and just the kind of buck I've been looking for the last several years. Finally, that opportunity presents itself. Finally, Bungie and I get our shot, and finally, Bungie and I get it done. Finally, at long last, look at this buck. Uh, he can still see he's still got the hemlock on his antlers, the bark from the hemlock tree. His forehead is all red from rubbing against that hemlock tree right in front of me. I passed on a bunch of deer. You've seen it right here on Death by Bungie. You've seen me pass on a couple of deer here and there over the last few seasons that I've been filming this stuff and putting it on the YouTube channel. And you've seen me pass on a few deer. And this is what I was waiting for. An eight point out to his ears. That's all I'm looking for. Uh, that for where we are here in Northeastern Pennsylvania is quite an accomplishment. It was worth waiting for in my opinion. In fact, I had half a mind to shoot the young buck that came in here before him this morning. Had that nice five point that came in, good healthy looking deer. I would have been happy with him as well, but every once in a while you get lucky. I'm glad I waited just a little bit longer. So I'm glad also that I can share this with you on the, on the Death by Bungie channel. Uh, sort of puts a nice cap on the season for me, sort of a climax to the season to make all that work that we did worthwhile. Um, I'm also happy that I could share it with my mom. Came down here, she's here also, and she's helping me out with all this stuff. And I'm so happy about this, that's, that's the bottom line. Thank you for watching Death by Bungie. Thank you for sticking with me here for all the encouragement. This season's been pretty rough for me here in the Pennsylvania crossbow season. Got a lot of encouragement from you folks on the Facebook page and here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. Thank you. 
Well, thanks for watching this episode of Death by Bungie. I hope you enjoyed this hunt as much as I did. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out the Facebook page and the Twitter feed. And until next time, all hail Bungie! What am I going to say?